Hey everybody, welcome. This is a video just on terminology, guys. And I have to say, when I say microeconomics, I wish somebody would have sat me down and been very explicit about the definitions of these three terms right here. I think it would have helped me out a lot. Nobody was, and so I kind of stumbled around on these definitions for a while, got them confused. And here it is. I just want to clarify these three different terms and their different definitions because they are three different concepts. And I think it's going to help you out right here from the beginning as you're studying microeconomics. So here's the three terms, guys. Marginal returns, returns to scale, and economies of scale. Now, you see some percentages here, okay? Those are just rough estimates that I've put down, and I'm basically saying the following. If you're talking about one of these three terms, 90% of the time you're talking about marginal returns. About only 2% of the time, if you're talking about one of these three terms, are you going to be talking about the returns to scale? And maybe about 8% of the time, if you're talking about one of these three terms, you're talking about economies of scale. So what does that mean? This one is the big one, okay? This is the one that most of your class is focused on. Most of the graphs you're doing in the class, guys, have this concept underlying those graphs, okay? So here's the deal. Marginal returns, let me define it get, uh, just to get going on this, okay? The word returns, and guys, I'm going to take my time on this definition because I really want you to just embrace definitions when you study microeconomics. And there are some easy ways to kind of like, you know, own these definitions. When it says returns, okay, look, if you say it to a financial person, they're going to think dollars. But as a microeconomist, guys, economists are generally focused on real things like output. So when you hear that word returns, what's truly the return of a firm when they produce? It's the good or service. So when it says marginal returns, it's saying, what's the change in output? What, you know, how many more goods or services, whatever you're producing, are you going to be able to produce when you change a variable input by one, keeping all other inputs constant. Okay, so let me say that again. Marginal returns, okay? We see that word returns? Oh, change in output. So what's our change in output? When we change a variable input by one, keeping everything else constant. The big thing I want you to also know about marginal returns, it's so important, is it is a short run concept, okay? Now, what's the definition of the short run in microeconomics? It's a situation when you have variable and fixed cost, okay? That some costs are fixed, that they're not varying with production. The number one fixed cost out there that I like to focus on is the size of the facility, the size of the plant, if you will, the size of the restaurant, whatever, the size of the facility. It's the number one fixed cost. And so when you're talking about the short run, the size of the facility is constant. You're not varying the size of the facility itself. You're only changing variable input. So one last time. Marginal returns, our delta in output, our returns, our change in output that we're getting. When we change a variable input by one, keeping all other inputs constant. And again, we're focused in the short run. And I've just got some things right here. You talk about that marginal product function. Hey, that marginal product function is very much based on marginal returns. Marginal cost curve, okay? That's so important curve in microeconomics marginal returns. And generally when you're speaking of ABC and ATC, underneath those is this concept of marginal returns because you're talking about short run average variable costs and short run average total cost. Okay, so there we go. Number two, returns to scale. The big thing I want you to understand is as we get to returns to scale, we're talking about the long run. And let me just go ahead and say when we get to economies of scale, we're also talking about the long run. So right there, such an important difference between these terms. This one is the short run term. These two are both long run terms. And we know in the long run in microeconomics, that just means there's no fixed cost. Everything is variable. And that means even that facility size is variable. So let's get to returns to scale. Again, the word return shows up. There's outputs, right? Okay, returns, we think outputs. So returns to scale, what are we doing? We're changing all inputs. And when I say all, I mean all because we're in the long run. There's no fixed cost. Everything is variable. So we're going to change all inputs by the same percent. Kind of an interesting thing we're doing here. So what I'm saying is, hey, you might be changing the facility size by 5%, the, the, the laborers in the facility by 5%, say increasing those by 5%, and increasing the machinery in the facility by 5%, basically increasing all inputs by the same percentage, okay? That's what you're going to do. I'm going to say 5% right now. But again, I'm changing every single input I have by the same percent, and then I'm seeing what is my percent change in output. So if I did change all my inputs by 
and my output, let's say, changed by 5%, I would be getting constant returns to scale. If I changed my inputs by 5% and my outputs went up by, say, 8%, I'd be getting increasing returns to scale. And of course, guys, if I change this by 5%, my inputs by 5%, and say my outputs only increase by 3%, I'd be getting decreasing returns to scale. So returns to scale is all about changing every single input by the same percent and seeing what is your percentage change in outputs. And again, from a definitional standpoint, we see that word returns, we think outputs, okay, I can hold on to that. Finally, economies of scale, economies of size. Now, here's the thing, we're going to be changing size of production in this particular, with this concept. But what we don't have to do, what we're not restricted by when we do economies of scale, is increasing every single input by the same uh, percentage, okay? What we're really just trying to say is, hey, let's be as efficient as we possibly can be, and maybe go from producing that amount to that amount to that amount, okay? Now, here's the thing. This little setup of this graph, I got dollars per unit, you know, these graphs are actually, you know, these graphs right here are in dollars per unit. I should point at those, not at the MP, but these three, dollars per unit. I got Q, right? Same with these three also. Okay, when you see these curves, that's what they've got. But in this graph, it's not going to be the short run average total cost curve. It's going to be the long run average total cost curve. And what you're generally going to see, the general shape as you teach, as you learn this concept, I should say, as you learn this concept is something like that. It's not the prettiest curve ever, but I'm going to put long run average total cost. A lot of times, a lot of textbooks might just call it the long run average cost curve. Okay? Why? Because again, we're in the long run. We don't have variable and fixed costs. We only have variable costs. Every cost is variable. So you can kind of drop a lot of, you know, something like the, you don't need an AVC, right? To differentiate it from an AFC or an ATC, right? So all costs are uh, variable. But again, the big thing is we're being as efficient as we can be. We might increase the facility size by, I don't know, 5%, labor by only 3%, machines by 2%. That's fine as long as that's the most efficient you can possibly be. And what you can see with the shape of this long run average cost curve is that it goes down for a while, gets constant for a while, and then begins to increase. And that's where this term comes into play economies of scale, diseconomies of scale, okay? And this is just constant economies of scale. It's this flat part right there is generally what I, is the term I use just so we don't get confused on it. The big one though is when it's going down and when it's going up. When it's going down, economies of scale. When it's going up, diseconomies of scale. But here guys, back to the big picture. You hear this term, what I want you to think immediately about is this one is changing the size of production, the scale of production, and what is happening to long run average cost. You hear this? It's all about what's happening to long run average cost. At some point, you're getting that economies of scale, at some point, the diseconomies of scale. Returns to scale, okay, the word return shows up. Hey, I know at the end we're looking at those outputs, and so we're doing an equal percentage change in all inputs. What's going to be our change in outputs? Again, marginal returns, okay, returns, outputs. Hey, what's going to be my change in output if I change one of my variable inputs by one, keeping all other inputs constant. Again, this is my short run concept. This is one we're dealing with most of the time. Okay, long run, long run. Whew. Hope that made sense to you. Hope that helps you out in your study of microeconomics, and I hope to see you in another video.